Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Well, Captain Thackeray, a long way from home, aren't we? I thought we'd have saved you for last, but since you're here... We... Oh dear, oh mercy, the white mantle is upon me. Whoa, lamentation, is this the end for poor Logan? Are, are, are you mocking me? I don't think you understand how this works. White Mantle, give the captain a demonstration. No thanks. I think I already have a pretty good idea. Now! Defend yourselves! Happiness mode engaged. Hello! I'm back! Welcome. Ready for action. Happy to meet you, hero. Glad to have you with us. You'll find everything you need here. Hail, Traveler. Wake up, you motherless Eddins. It's time to go. I'd offer the traditional pirate's greeting, but your spleen is better unperforated. You're listening to Guild Wars Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network, brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter, and by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon at doghousesystems.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Guild Wars Reporter. This is episode 164. I am Celeste and as always I am joined by the alleviating Alona. Is that even a word? Yes, to <laughs> alleviate pain. Alleviating. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Celeste. You're wonderful. <laughs> I'm not alliterating. You're just wonderful. <laughs> I see. Okay. Well, you know, that works too. <laughs> It does. Chat room is trying to give us life and motivate they us. They do. They <laughs> do. They do give us life. They really do. They're they're rocking it pretty hard right now too. So, Alona, let's go ahead and talk about what you did in game this week. First of all, I think we should just mention how much fun we had last week with the guys from Relics of War. Oh my gosh! Yes, with Spirit and Grybok though. <laughs> That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Hope to do it again. It's definitely going to happen again. Yes. So we did that last week. Anyone who showed up for that or has since listened to the show, hopefully you guys liked it too. So that was yay. Also, I forgot to mention, was it last week or the week before? I can't remember now because we didn't really do what we did last week. Last week. I was given a heads up a couple Fridays ago about a bunch of Tarnished Coast people rampaging through the Eternal Battlegrounds as Dolyaks. Sweet. Yeah, so I decided, hey, this is happening. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't have anything on the go, so I joined in very briefly. But it was a hoot, and they even had some players from the other worlds joining in. <laughs> <laughs> And the, we all decided to charge. Oh, I can't remember which world it was. It was one of one of the three, obviously. Yeah. And did you know you insta die if you tried to enter their domain? <laughs> you ah. can't. Actually, you can't actually. So it was all these dead people <laughs> <laughs> that used to be Dalyax. Yes, that was a lot of fun. Apparently, everyone was in the Tarnished Coast team speak. I didn't have that channel set up, so I hadn't popped. I have the information for it now. I didn't have time to do it to also be part of this. Right. That was, it was brief, but it was a lot of fun. Just like, hey, we're doing this. I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Although I honestly didn't have any Doliac tonics or any, the ruminant tonics can turn you into a Doliac, I think. And I mm -hmm. bought some, but I never got Doliac. I just kept firing them off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Moving to current day, I baited just a little bit this week. This weekend. Feels like so long ago. Uh, yeah. I didn't do an awful lot because it was a long weekend. There's so many draws on your time. I didn't get quite as much game time in general. 
Mm -hmm. But I did specifically try out Daredevil, mostly to wrap my head around it. Like, even though I'm terrible at Thief, Mm -hmm. I still needed to actually physically play Daredevil to really understand what the heck they were talking about. Yeah. With the Elite. Since we don't really go into this an awful lot later in the show, I thought I'd just put this in here. I loved the dodge mechanic for it, that you could trait that the dodges did different things. I like the dagger one. Clouded Chimera gave me like what he was using, and I quite liked it, so I just like stuck with that. And I loved the additional dodge that you got on your bar. And when I switched to another profession afterwards, I was like, I want more dodge. (laughs) Yeah, two dodges just isn't enough anymore. Two dodges is one too few. (laughs) (laughs) So so I I liked both those. And I think I'm actually going to revisit some of the information about Daredevil now that I've played it. I haven't yet. Right. Because I think I'm going to understand it more. Yeah. I bought a webcam. Mm -hmm. So I did some stream tests and some PvP on Twitch on my own personal channel. So I did a bit of that. I also got some really good tips for my ranger for PvP. It's not cool. what I normally play in PvP, so I was like more than willing to accept tips. <laughs> and they were good. <laughs> I just have it here, F, F, and F. So that's <laughs> fractals, fungins, and the extra F is for friends. So we did fractals. If you want to say <laughs> that, sure. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I said it was for, Celeste. I don't know about oh. you. <laughs> mm, okay. We did fractals first. Mm -hmm. We got our typicals. (laughs) Again. Harpy. Yep. Oh, I forgot. That was with my super mega awesome anomaly run for the fractals. What? When we got the... um, Oh my god, yes! (laughs) It wasn't even our final fractal. Often I get it as the final fractal, but this one it was the prior yeah, it was Thamanova. Yeah, and Thamanova, you that's right. basically were, like, soloing the anomaly. <laughs> twice! Well, twice. Twice. I, like, there was no even, you couldn't, the first time there was no health on his bar, and I died. And I was so bummed. But I think both times, there was about a third of his health left, mm-hmm. would you say? Was that, am I being over generous? The first time, there was, like, two-thirds of his health left. Okay. And you got him down no. to, like, almost none. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the second time, he had, like, half health, and you got him down. No. He was lower than half health. Oh, okay. I'm, po- like I'm positive he was lower than... Yeah, I think he was about a third health by the time I kicked in. <laughs> it's like, oh, yes. Emma saying the first time that I died was your guys' fault because you were distracting me on purpose. And I was like, I was like, everyone needs to stop talking. And say, no, people stop encouraging me. Is what I ended up saying because <laughs> it was far too distracting. Oh man! And Hunter kept saying, "You're running too fast. You're going to run out of platforms." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I was panicking. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I totally forgot about that until just now, even when I was writing in the show notes, I forgot about that. So on to the extra F, which was for friends. Mm-hmm. I've mentioned previous that a few of my friends have started playing again. They've had the game almost since launch. Mm. The three of them and M took them through the Ascalon Catacomb story mode. And thank goodness M's raid mom kicked in because I couldn't remember what to do. And she was awesome. (laughs) You were listening to part of that, weren't you? To probably like the first third of it. Yeah, I had no idea. It's been so long since I've done Ascalon Catacombs in general. And normally when Mm -hmm. I do, I just follow people. I don't think I've ever actually (laughs) led in that dungeon. Yeah. But no, she did... She was great and so good at explaining stuff. One guy had only ever been in a dungeon once, and I think it was two years ago or more. And the other two had never been in a dungeon. So, yay! Side segue to what M is reminding me of. When we were in Ascalon Catacombs, you know when you have to collect the boulders to be able to have them to separate the lovers? Mm Mm-hmm. So we were doing that, 
and I was running around collecting them and I ran and picked one up <laughs> and it was the one that was holding the doors open <laughs> without, and I didn't realize that. And the doors closed. We're like, what's happening? Oh no, everyone, I'm not, I, I'm outside and they're all trapped in the hall. And <laughs> M tells me, oh, did you pick up the one on the pressure plate? I went, oh, that must've been what I did. <laughs> I went to put it down, but I threw the bolter. I threw it away. <laughs> Instead of dropping it. <laughs> so I had to find another one. <laughs> but I had already picked the area clean <laughs> for for the hallway. <laughs> so I had to wait for one to respawn so I could pick it up and drop it onto the pressure plate. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god. And now I'm crying because that was so funny. <laughs> it's like, I don't need this anymore. Toss. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again for reminding me that I totally forgot. <laughs> the most moronic thing that happened in that was my fault. Then at various types over the weekend, I, I'm i not often able to catch Twitch streams, but I was able to catch a couple this weekend and yesterday, because I had yesterday off. So I caught some of Inks. He was streaming and that was quite enjoyable. And I caught a peachy party, which was the first time I had caught one of those. And there mm -hmm. were some epic giveaways, which I missed. I didn't get, well, not missed. I didn't win. But I don't often get to take part in those because they're often during times when I'm unavailable. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. Nice to support other content creators. Mm -hmm. And finally, just last night, I didn't really have anything big on the horizon that I wanted to do. So for the daily, it was Svani or Shaman. And it was a bit away, so I thought, oh, I'm just going to World Boss train it. And a bunch of us did that. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, Hunter got an exotic. I didn't. I don't know if anyone else got one. <gasps> oh, mm -hmm. I know what else I need to mention. And I'm but thinking of it before my turn is up, which wow. is like, never happens. <laughs> After the fractal run, I got the Ascended Ring Solaria. Mm -hmm. And in two different PvP matches over the weekend, I got Solaria. So I got three Solaria <laughs> in three days. <laughs> These things awesome. don't stack. I wish they, they stacked. Don't. They don't but stack. They don't. they don't stack. Don't stack. Never stack. I will be looking forward to the changes to being able to salvage those. Because mm -hmm. I don't need three. I don't need three Solaria. Mm, nope. Probably not. And I probably have been forgetting something, but what did you do this week, Celeste? I did fractals with my Mesmer mm -hmm. and fungins with my Necro. And as a side note to that, Panther was running a Reaper and I was yes. running just my regular staff Necro and it was super effective. Yes, I definitely noted that it felt really smooth. And I, I noticed playing my Mesmer a difference playing with both the Necro and the Reaper with the wells and the shouts. It, it was awesome. Really well. Yeah. I really liked it. So I'm like, Oh, <laughs> hot come out. So we could have Reapers in the party for fractals and fungions. Yes, it was nice. Mm -hmm. And I also did world boss train for a little while, a little while after you left too, I think. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, cause I caught, Jormag and yeah, that was something next. else. If Jormag wasn't as long of a fight as it was, I might have stuck around. Yeah, Jormag does take a while. It takes a long time. I did a little bit of PvE with Steak and Potatoes, man. Not a lot. You know, when I'm not thinking about it, I'll be like, oh, I'll go ahead and hop on and do a couple hearts or something like that. Have you done anything with your European account lately? I get login dailies and oh, <laughs> open right. the chest. <laughs> For the jumping puzzle. That's right. Yours isn't a free account, so you get the dailies, the yeah. login rewards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I do on her right now. Someday I'll actually play her and do stuff, but it's just kind of like, eh, not been in the mood for it, I guess. And I did some beta things. I explored a lot. Like we found that awesome door thing and took screenshots, a bunch of screenshots. Mm-hmm. Oh, I never took any. <sighs> Oh my god, do you think I can go back and do it? <laughs> Not right now. Oh. The beta's closed? <laughs> yeah. So I'm 
I'm not great at Reaper, but I could see myself getting better at it with a lot of practice. Had you played it prior? No, I hadn't. No. This weekend was the first time I was doing Reaper and Berserker, and I'm really terrible at Berserker. But that's probably because I don't even have a warrior that's even level 20. So I Oh mean, my goodness. Oh, right. You don't, you've not found your I haven't spot. found the happy spot with warrior to where I actually like it. So I haven't really played it at all. At Steak all? and potatoes, man, is, is very neglected, but I'm trying. <laughs> That's pretty much all I did. I know I'm forgetting a bunch of stuff. I do remember being in game more. Actually, we played a lot this past weekend. I don't remember exactly all the stuff I did. It was too much fun. Fun overload. Yes. So let's go ahead and talk about when we live stream. We live stream on Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. EDT, 6.30 p.m. PDT at twitch.tv slash Reporter. You can subscribe to the audio version of the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube, whatever. <laughs> and remember to rate and review us so that people know that we are a real podcast with real English words, and we sometimes put them in the correct order. And sometimes we make up words, so they're not technically real, but... They exist? Does that make sense? They exist. (laughs) And we had a couple reviews this past week. And so this week, we're just doing in the order in which they were given. Mm -hmm. So this one, I liked it because it has a twist ending. (laughs) Because down to earth, sort of. Five stars, iTunes, from Topegi of Dune in the U.S. from August 26th. On the first episode I listened to, titled Damask, I was honestly appalled at the poor streaming audio from Alona and quickly came to a harsh conclusion that this production was not for me. But when the next week episode came around, I was impressed by the honest sincerity of the speakers who genuinely reflect the same love for the game that I have. The staff is friendly and have no piety preventing them from interacting with their listeners via Guild Wars 2 and social media. I give them five stars for doing such a great job. Twist ending! <laughs> I so love that. sweet. Yeah, it is. That was the week that, uh, Damask was the week that it was All recording the audio through went the to hell. Oh, it was an, terrible. <laughs> it was like I'm so sorry. That was the first one you listened to because that yes, that was not a good audio quality episode. So I'm glad that you gave us another shot. <laughs> yes. So, so thank you. <laughs> Think we're ready for another attack? From land, air, or sea, we won't be caught off guard again. Report from Lion's Arch. Long live Lion's Arch. There were a couple posts this past week about raids specifically. The first one was on the official Guild Wars 2 website, designing challenging content. And the other we're going to go into a little bit, it was uh, from Massively OP. It was from PAX Prime. And that Guild Wars 2 is never getting a raid finder was that article. Mm -hmm. Johansson assured me that gamers, even in the most difficult Guild Wars 2 content, were barely touching the surface of what players could do in a group. He reiterated that although there is no hard trinity, Guild Wars 2 does have a kind of trinity of its own that players were not always taking advantage of in the current PvE game. Brief segue, I totally agree with this. Mm -hmm. He divided the roles into control, support, and damage, and beyond that, groups will have to consider class combos when taking on a raid boss. He said that the only place in the game where all the class abilities are being used to their fullest was in high-level PvP, and he wants to change that so that it takes the same level of skill to raid. Translation is, I will never be able to complete a raid because I'm terrible (laughs) at PvP. (laughs) You're not. You're not terrible at PvP. I'm not good at it. (laughs) Uh, Very few people are really good at it. (laughs) It's... (laughs) But you are more aware of your surroundings than I am, so you'd be fine. 
I try to be, but my reaction time is is null. <laughs> well. Because of the large diversity of encounters, I was prompted to ask whether players will be able to swap out abilities between boss fights. Johansson said that currently players are in combat the whole time they are in an encounter, so swapping out abilities isn't possible. But he did say that Anna is, quote, playing around with what it will let you change. However, he was quick to point out that weapon swapping can easily change a character's role in the group, and that can be done on the fly. That makes me think of a little bit more like Guild Wars 1, where you set up... Go into a zone. Yeah, you had to set it up in advance, and once you're in the zone, it's locked in place. Now, this doesn't sound as hard and fast as that, Mm -hmm. but a bit, Yeah, you think? The development teams playing around also extended to group boons and other group support abilities. Currently, Johansson said that it's still in flux and there will be parts where the groups will be split. But as of right now, boons only affect the five people who are in your group. That's interesting. That's raids or that's across the board? I think that's raids, in which case each group is going to need their own buffer, for lack of a better term if it's required for that particular encounter. Okay, so this might be a really stupid question that I am completely behind the info on. So raids are 10 person, Mm -hmm. but groups are only five? Yep. So there's two groups that can go into raid. That's what it seems like. Based on that little bit of information, yes. Have I seen a UI or anything? I have no idea. Well, yeah, none, none <laughs> of us have. So I, because when I first was thinking 10 person, it was one 10 person group. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking as well. Okay, so this is a change from what I was thinking. And Hunter saying in chat that they, they corrected that immediately by saying you can change out of combat. Of course, you've always been able to. Yeah, they kind of indicate there that here that you're just in raids, you're not often going to be out of combat. That seems to be the case, yes. Being a raider myself, and sometimes enjoying the ability to group up with other random people, I asked about a group finder system for raids, whether there is one in Heart of Thorns or will be in the future, and he explicitly said, no, there will not be one at the launch of Heart of Thorns, and there are no plans to ever put one in. He emphasized that this was intended to be coordinated endgame content, not something a pug can tackle. For raids, we focused on players working together on really challenging content. I believe that is part of community building. We cater to a ton of different playstyles. We have content that you don't have to group for, and some that you can do in ad hoc groups. Basically, you can go anywhere you want to join in with other players already. And there was an update to that. To clarify, Johansson was specifically talking about a random pug raid finder. It will still be possible to use the group finder to put together a raid. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's different from having a raid finder if you're still going to be using the looking for group tool. Well, I think the difference was they're not having a separate tool specifically for raids. Well, yeah, because they already have one built into the game with the looking for group tool. I I, I think (laughs) perhaps people were thinking because it was going to be so challenging and different that it might be separated out somewhat. Mm, Okay. And that's what people were asking. And they said, no, that's just not happening. Because there is this other thing that you can break and and, and describe stuff. So that's how I read that. Okay. It had confused me to no end. I was like, <laughs> what? what? what they're, are they they're the same. <laughs> it, it's the same. Same Z's. Yeah. Ah. Hashtag is saying putting together 10 might be challenging using the current looking for group. But that's not a bad point. Yeah. Because if they're two separate five person groups going in, how do you coordinate that through the looking for group tool? Mm, yeah. That would be frustrating. That is a dang fine point. That said, moving forward, everything brand spanking new coming to the game will be specifically designed for players who have bought Heart of Thorns. Specifically, the Living World story will be only for Heart of Thorns players. He explained that the story itself has moved to Maguma, and it only makes sense that the new Living World updates will happen over there. Mm -hmm. So just a little confirmation for people who may not be buying Heart of Thorns. 
over on MMORPG on the second page, they asked, what about traditional group dungeons? Are you pretty much done with those for now? Leaving them as part of the leveling experience? Or will group dungeons be making a return? And Colin replied, we're treating Fractals of the Mist as our focus on endgame five-player dungeon content. And all additions we make to five-player dungeon content more fun will expand on Fractals. And then raids will be the next level of that. So dungeons are for story and whatevs. And will no longer be updated. There's nothing there about not being updated. But that's what they're implying. There's not going to be any more dungeons added. It's true. Well, up to saying five shouldn't be harder than three merging with a group of two. Prior Voluptus, we were talking about the fact that it sounds like, from what they were saying, that it's not one group of ten, it is two groups of five, which would make it harder to coordinate that through a looking for group tool. Mm -hmm. Again, we're kind of reading between the lines there in the first place, so... Yeah, like, when it comes to rating, and this is kind of my little editorial piece here, is that we really don't know much about it. We know that it's ten man, we know that it's coming out in, in... staggered release after Heart mm-hmm. of Thorns comes out, well after. And we know that that's the place that you're going to have to be to get legendary armor. And that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. We've seen some of the bosses because there's screenshots <gasps> and in the trailer. Tangthulu. Tangthulu. <laughs> and that's about it. We don't know much about it. And we know that some of the fights are going to require that you have masteries. And I'm Mm -hmm. fine with that. It makes sense that you would need to have put in a fair amount of time before going into this. And that's pretty much it. We don't know what kind of reward structure it's going to have. We don't know how long encounters are going to take or anything like that. Because even in one of these interviews, they ask Colin, you know, how long are these going to take? And they're like, it varies from which (laughs) one you do. And you're just kind of like, wait, so... Should I be preparing for five hours or two? Half hour to seven. You gotta (laughs) wonder if it's gonna be like like Aether Path, where you're up all night trying to get past this one boss or something, you know? (laughs) One of those things where I'm I'm eager to try them. I don't know if I'll do well, but I am willing to try them. Yeah, I'm I'm interested. I would not want to lead one because that's not something that interests me. <laughs> but I am certainly yeah. willing to be a cog in the wheel. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move along to points of interest, which we have gone ahead and shared the notes from Dolphy. If you want to learn all of the stuff about guild claiming, frankly, we're not world rewarders, so we don't know very much. We're not in the beta, so we don't really know much. The most commentary that I can give is that Hugh's guild of Hugh is the best tag <laughs> swag <laughs> made me laugh. Yes. My basic takeaway from that whole segment was Hugh is a delight. <laughs> An absolute delight. Tyler's a sweetie too, don't get me wrong. But oh, just- <laughs> all those puns. Oh, a yeah. shelter. Oh, Seriously. Gosh. And it causes slow because there's a turtle icon for slow. Yes. <laughs> he is very entertaining. That mm-hmm. hue. So. Yes. And then there was also our favorite segment, bells and freaking missiles. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it's my favorite segment. <laughs> The big focus this time was on the music coming with Heart of Thorns. They had McLean Deemer and Lena Chappelle. They talk about the shift from season one and season two when the music was when you have time to now where they are the in-house team and given the reins to fully enact their visions for the music for Heart of Thorns. Yes, I thought that was very interesting. Like, because it was a bit of a gamble to move to an in-house music team, honestly. Like, hey, we got some people here. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a really interesting point of view from that. Oh, yeah. And I love these segments just because I love the music mm-hmm. and the different sound effects and noises and voice acting and everything that goes into the game. There's so much audio work. That goes into Guild Wars 2, that it's really overwhelming to think about. 
They worked with the sound team for music to be more reactive to actual fights, should be subtle and just flow, unnoticed but integral to players' experience. Not just wallpaper, but ebbing and flowing with the fight. Yeah, that whole segment I just loved so much because that it completely goes with my design philosophy, philosophy, which I often explain with a line from my favorite poem, not to get all hoity-toity and highfalutin here, but the line is, I would like to be that unnoticed and that necessary. That's what I heard when they said that, or it was McLean that was saying that specifically. Just about. Lena agreed, but that was like, I love that. (laughs) I'm so excited about it. I really am because one of my favorite pieces is Battle in the Breachmaker, Mm -hmm. and the song loops through different phases Doing that fight with that music on at the time made it 10 times better. Yeah. The tone was completely different without music versus having it on. And the amazing technical advancement of this to the game, I'm definitely going to play the game with music on more often than off, as opposed to like the last few years, really. I'd just turn it on if I was doing something new. I always had it on But from what I understood, even from Battle of the Breachmakers portion of they've gone beyond that and they're working even more closely with the sound team so that I think Lena was even talking about how, you know, if you're running away from a fight and something aggroes you, but it's not part of that big epic fight, you're still going to get some fight music, but maybe it's not going to be quite as monolithic and pervasive as the previous music was because the game recognizes, hey, this is just some random MOA that you might have attacked. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's like a low threat level. If you want to go like as a, a threat level arc of approaching, aggroing, attacking, killing, mm-hmm. leading, and then down to calm again, that's kind of what's happening. I am super excited to experience this, to yes. see how it feels. Because again, you shouldn't even notice it. It should just, you should just know that it's not even better necessarily, but it's just good. <laughs> <laughs> it should feel more natural. It should be more immersive. <laughs> yes, immerse. Thank you, Celeste. <laughs> Thank you. It should it should be more immersive without even you realizing it. Yes, that's the whole point of the music is that it throws you into the world and gets your head in the game in a literal sense. Is that auditorily? That's what happens with music and fight music and the transition between the two and having multiple steps in that is going to change a lot of the ways that the world feels alive. Yes. They also then talked about the motifs that have been carried out, the oldest of which was air quotes Mordrama theme from McLean, which first appeared in Tower of Nightmares. Mm -hmm. Even though it wasn't initially Mordrama's theme, it's kind of worked its way into the web of Mordrama's theme. And apparently one person so far has noticed this thread, this musical yeah. thread being woven and and has commented, at least I think it was on Reddit, right? That they said they saw that? Someone had declared it. I don't know where or whom. Yeah. It's important. And they talked a little bit about the points of interest theme and how it's like very newsy. And then all of a sudden it goes into this denouement of Gilworth's theme. And mm-hmm. it just... Like he described it, it's it's comforting. It's the musical meatloaf. It's it's perfect. That sort of mm-hmm. thing. And it's just like you listen to that points of interest theme, and you think, oh, whatever. They made a little opening and closing for the thing. It's like, no, sorry, that's actually like a decent piece of music, guys. Yes, I really love the intro music for points of interest. So, mm-hmm. and they mentioned how it it cues in then to it finishes on the Guild Wars theme. Yeah. And Ruby was talking about how whenever they tested it around the office, whenever they played it, when it got to that point in the music, people just lit up. Mm -hmm. So, yay. Because when you have that opening by itself, it doesn't necessarily sound like anything in particular. Well, it sounds adventurous. Right, but it doesn't sound like it fits within that world of Tyria. You know what I mean? That's true. Yep. Teasers. It's delicious. You typed this. I don't know why. (laughs) Because that's what McLean said. He actually used the word, it's delicious. (laughs) And it made me happy. 
<laughs> for bells and missiles that which was kind of like in the middle of the show we went ahead mm-hmm. and put in a link for the proper timestamp at which the preview pieces are played and first they play lena's and it's for a location for a place that we have seen in the trailer mm-hmm. you texted me yes yeah, you DM me the link to this saying, you must watch this. I queued it up when I got home and Cal and I were listening to it. So I have not seen points of interest at that point, at this stage of the game. Mm-hmm. And I'm listening to this and I I actually said to Cal, this sounds like it belongs to that city area from the trailer where we believe the Exalted might be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it sounds like that is exactly where this is. Yeah. In the game. I'm like, woo, you go, Lena. (laughs) If this is right, you nailed it. Because that is exactly what it sounded like to me when I was listening to it. I love her piece. Mm -hmm. It's bright and open and hopeful. And Mm -hmm. it's got this like tentative naivete of adventure. And I know I sound super hoity-toity, but I mean, <laughs> that's seriously the impression that I get with it. It's a young adventurer going out and exploring the world and seeing everything for the first time without realizing all the dangers that are underneath. Yeah. It's beautiful. I cried. Yep. I still cry when I listen to it. I actually had to, because they play it over top. Oh, yes. <laughs> they play it over top. Uh, is it Ruby? Is it Ruby, Tyler, and Hugh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're even with that audio. Up, yeah, even with that audio, they're having a good time, and it's it's very entertaining. However, a little distracting to the music. Yeah, I had to actually look away to actually be able to appreciate the music properly. Yeah, Cal saying as as younger races walk up to an elder race. That was the feeling that he got listening to the piece from Lena. Yeah, that's very fitting. And mm-hmm. McLean's piece is dark. He mm-hmm. said it was more mysterious than scary. Yep. And I can agree with that. But it's kind of like melancholic mystery, like you're waiting for another shoe to drop. So it's another location as well. It's a theme for a location yeah. as well. But it sounds like this one we've not seen yet. Yes, So I'm curious where this will be. It is very evocative, though. Yes. They are delicious. They are delicious, and they're perfect. And yes, Yes. all of these pieces were done by live orchestra. Which honestly makes a huge difference. So much richer. Yes, I would definitely agree with that. Can you guys tell we really like bells and missiles? (laughs) Can you guys tell we really like music? (laughs) And yet I'm one of the least musical people on the face of the planet. So as evidenced by the fact that I was singing one time and Hunter thought <laughs> thought I was singing Leonard Cohen. It, it totally, it was something like a pop hit and I was singing it. Is that Leonard Cohen? I'm like, no! <laughs> oh, Valona. <laughs> Moving on. Starting tomorrow... If you're listening to the live stream or yesterday, if you're listening to the audio version on iTunes, woo, Chronomats all over the place. There is a Mordrum event weekend, even though it's starting on Thursday. Mm -hmm. From 9 a.m. Pacific time on September 10th through 9 a.m. Pacific time on September 14th, Mordrum will be staging periodic incursions into Brisbane wildlands, Keswick Hills, and Diesa Plateau. Keep an eye on the World Event UI, which will let you know when Mordermoth is launching its assault. Coordinate with other players to stop the Mordrum in their tracks, and you'll earn Mordrum Blooms. Mordrum Blooms are the research samples the Derman Priory seek. In exchange for the research samples, the Derman Priory is offering concessions as a reward. Mm. Yes. And I hope I don't get boned by being at work for like, I, like in the sense of as much as I always tout the original Karka event as being awesome because it was one time only. And if I'm at work and miss like a one time only thing, I'll be very sad. 
It happens that way, though. Like, with some of the living world achievements and stuff like that, where, like, if you got there late, it was broken. <laughs> well, if you got there early, sometimes it was broken, and then it was yeah, late, it was fixed. It could yeah. go either way on that one. To be fair, yes, this is true. <laughs> Cal is wondering if it's going to be Coke and some fries <laughs> for the concession. For the concession. <laughs> <laughs> We'll yes, see. and it will cost 30 bucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. As at all event venues. <laughs> now, there are some new emblems for guilds that went through and won a glorious contest. Glorious. In first place, there is Koala with the amazing quaggan holding a knapsack with stars. It's a little blue quaggan. It's quite cute. Yes. Pandadactyl designed this pink quaggin, which I kind of prefer more because it's more um, translucent. Oh, yeah, it is, too. Yeah, I like the textures on it. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Then Macaro mm -hmm. had a dead dragon head, which I also like quite a bit. It's yes. kind of cool. With, a, with, you know, with the sword right through with the X's for eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it and the tongue hanging out. <laughs> That is really cute, actually. <laughs> then Cobalt Art came up with the llama. The legendary llama. Yes. Legendary. And Intoxicate came through with the Mordrum Wolf, which Head. also is very, like, flowery. I kind of like it. Doesn't seem like it's that intimidating. <laughs> as much as I love the llama. Llama! I actually think the Mordrum Wolf might be my favorite favorite and this is for <laughs> because it is balanced yes the other ones are great but this one mirrors each other mm -hmm. each side so i think that's i think i actually like that one the best but also llama also llama but also llama yeah i've seen if they had taken the llama and mirrored it back to back so there were two llamas that would have been better i think Yes. Symmetrical. Voluptus has my back. <laughs> it's symmetrical. Do you require my assistance? Ask an Azura. Excelsior. And we we got a pity question from Artful on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> Hooray for pity questions. Who is our intro maven? So, priority. Hot or Mad King Labyrinth? <laughs> then hashtag end of October plans. Mm -hmm. Hashtag awesome. Yes. October is bringing so many things. So many things. I think both Heart of Mad King Thorns. Just mash them up. Mash them up together. That works pretty well. I'm definitely going to be focusing on Heart of Thorns first, but I'm most definitely going to be popping into Lion's Arch to check out the decor in the very least. Well, and there's not quite a week between them, so... We got time. Got time to do both. Actually, it might be kind of nice for to go full bore into Heart of Thorns. And then, okay, back off, back off, cool it off, back off, mm -hmm. Mad King. And then back into Heart of Thorns. Just kind of chill out for a bit. Yeah. I comma hashtag the Mad King too, Ivy. I love oh, the yeah. Mad King Thorn. Big time. <gasps> I wonder if this year we'll get the Nightmare Court outfit. We ought to. Honestly, it was my favorite outfit in Guild Wars 1. Oh, the big bustle. Yes! Okay. I actually mixed a orange dye because in guild wars one you could mix dyes to make your own if you were unaware people who are listening and i mixed an orange with one of the pink dyes which was actually made for pink day in la mm -hmm. and it made this amazing amazing color i'll have to show you sometimes celeste it is beautiful beautiful yeah bubble butt <laughs> that's pretty much i'm hoping that we get that this year fingers crossed that would be nice <laughs> Yes. And if you are a new player or know a new player, Bog Otter put out top 10 tips for new Guild Wars 2 players, and it covers just about anything you could need to know. 
But uh, as long as those things are 10 things. Yes, just 10 things, <laughs> only 10. <laughs> Never more. <laughs> the Raven. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, the first unofficial tip is that you should not attack the chickens in Fields of Ruin, just so you know. And, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Mm-hmm. Tales of Tyria. Moving on to Tales of Tyria, we have a date for Pink Day in LA, which is October 17th Mm -hmm. this year. And part of that, through Gamers Giving Back, we have the Quaggan Waddle, which is September 27th, which is Sunday. Starts 12 p.m. CDT. Mm -hmm. And it's the Quaggan Waddle for Cancer. And it's cute. They just basically run around and have little contests and stuff like that, but... It's nice to mm-hmm. have community things like this where you just hang out with people and get to know them. And it, it's good for the community. It's good for morale. It's engaging for new players. It's yep. a good thing. Yep. You can RSVP. We will have a link mm-hmm. in the show notes, but there is a Facebook event. You can pump up the hype on Reddit and the official Guild Wars 2 forums and tell your GW2 playing Quaggan loving friends. Quaggan loving friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like action. Quaggan. Coo. Nice teeth. It's mm. <laughs> my favorite. And we also have screenshot shinies with a beautiful char by Taz over on Tumblr. And I just, it, it's so pretty. They're just screenshots cleaned up to make pretty, but so pretty. The armor combo with the die is lovely. Great use of the scarf. Mm -hmm. And and the hair. (laughs) I love. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of hair on Char. But I like this. Love this. I like it. I love it. It's so cute. It's so cute. We have another NPC concept from Char's Laughing Alone with Salads on Tumblr. Mm -hmm. And this is Balalu, which is a quaggan from the Bay and Lions Arch, who is currently training to become a master jeweler. And she's often seen waddling around the central plaza with arms full of pearls and jewels, cooing to herself excitedly. I wanted her name to be (laughs) Blingaloo. This is serious business. It's serious business, and I'm all blinged out, so I'm bling a loop. <laughs> it's really cute. It is. I this is I love it that people are coming up with NPC ideas. It's perfect. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking for kind of a deeper dive, or maybe you're just curious, that shaman has a guide that overlaps the zones from Guild Wars One and Guild Wars Two. And if you zoom in strategically you get to see all of the other, well, points of interest from Guild Wars 1 <laughs> and where they would lie on Guild Wars 2. So I, I had a lot of fun with this, with looking at, because he's got um, all the way out to Verdant Brink mapped in, so mm-hmm. you can get a good idea of where all of the old areas are. And so, you know, it's just pretty Super cool. exciting. It's just... You know, like you get to be like, oh, I wonder what happened with what's my doodle. And you go, oh, <laughs> there it is. Like you can see there's a little tiny map pasted in from where like um, one of the new guild halls is. And it's pretty darn close to Ventari's Refuge. And you kind of go, huh. So we've been there before, kind of, maybe. Not exactly. Not to that extent. Hmm. Now I want to go back maybe. to Guild Wars 1 and look at it again. So there's a lot to think about with that. And I just, I have a lot of fun with this kind of stuff. There's a googly-eyed Ritlock statue. And thank you. (laughs) Thank you for making this and taking photos of it. (laughs) So so Celeste found this link and I clicked on it, even with the warning that it was called Ritlock with googly eyes. Mm Mm-hmm. I scared the animals with how loud my laugh was. <laughs> <laughs> because it was like a blah! <laughs> and 
And thankfully, it mellowed quickly to a low cackle. <laughs> a low, evil cackle that just rumbled for days. <laughs> it's wonderful. I showed it to Cal when I came upstairs. And he goes, what did you see, Ritlock? What did you see? Yep. <laughs> I am purposely not following the link <laughs> on my monitor because you guys need your ear dr- eardrums tomorrow, I'm assuming. <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> Especially me if I'm going to be editing. Oh my god, it was so funny. <laughs> and also over on Tumblr, Ketamel submitted a piece via Reddit and I followed through to their Tumblr and found all of their Guild Wars 2 tagged things because I'm persistent like that. But they have a really great piece of an Azurn Elementalist that I just love a lot. Again, this is one that you had found, obviously, that when I clicked on it, I gasped. I gasped audibly. I was by myself downstairs and went, <gasps> When I saw it, it is so beautiful. It really is. And I love the progression jif that mm-hmm. goes along with it. I really enjoy <laughs> seeing the background of how things are made. And they have a lot of really amazing Guild Wars 2 art pieces on here. Yes. Definitely the value added of the GIF is amazing. I can't say jif. Not seriously. I mean, I love jif, but GIF. It's a jif. <laughs> If you are in the mood to be inspired with Guild Wars 2 art, go for it. Just beautiful stuff. Go for it. We were also sent a link. This was from Romo, right? Yes, this was from Romo. (laughs) (laughs) Romo sent us a link for the Azura Fashion Club. It was a guild recruitment video as a result from a post by Gail Gray on the official forums recommending players to advertise their guild. And it is awesome. It's wonderful. <laughs> the, the, so it's it's based single person guild. Yes. And they're doing world versus they're doing a flamethrower at a door. <laughs> that broke me. <laughs> I think the guild party with the Azura sitting down on the floor holding a balloon <laughs> with like the tray of food out and everything else. Yes. Oh, oh I forgot gosh. about that. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you. Thank you for making that because it is adorbs. Yes. I love it. And a special congratulations to Alex of RPG Shack for reaching and exceeding his fundraising goal for a cancer charity during his 24 hour stream. I tuned in periodically and he was quite the trooper. Yeah, the last couple of hours, he looked so tired. Yes. Well, I did the one for Gamers Giving Back, not last year, but the year previous, mm-hmm. for, where we did oh, all extra Mesmer life. is doing. Extra Life. Extra Life. Thank you, not Gamers Giving Back. Also very important, but different. Yes. The last two hours are so hard. <laughs> yeah, they really are the hardest. So hard. So I think I tuned in about four hours in and one or two more times after that. And he was pretty quiet by the the last one I tuned in. Congratulations for uh, exceeding your goal. Indeed. and It's going to help a lot of folks. Yeah. So thank you, Alona, for doing the show with me this week. Thanks, Celeste. And thank you, chat room, for being so lovely this evening. Yes. You've been very entertaining. Thank you for downloading the show. We hope that you enjoyed it and maybe you learned a new English word. (laughs) (laughs) We hope that you come back again next week. But most importantly, we hope to see you in game. Legion calls. So if you have a community event that you would like for us to share, go ahead and send us an email. Seize the moment. And if you've got a burning question or for our Ask an Azura segment, just let us know. I'm selling. You buying? We have coupon codes for Doghouse Systems. Use the coupon code Reporter at doghousesystems.com to get an additional 120 gigabyte Super Star Destroyer drive for free on their next build. Nice gear. Or a star-studded diaper. Or a star-studded diaper. Yep. No free samples. 
Patreon page. If you're in love with the show or the network, please consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. Thanks for pitching in. In the very least, it helps us keep the metaphorical lights on. So check it out at patreon.com slash MMO reporter. That fulfills my needs. Thanks so much. Audibletrial.com slash MMO reporter. Books! Books! Now with sound! <laughs> Knowledge is the greatest treasure. If you want a free audiobook, you should go to audibletrial.com slash MMO reporter. That's valuable. So, Alona, if people want to get in contact with us, how would they do so? They would email us at gwreporter at mmoreporter.com. Twitter is at gwreporter. Our website is guildwarsreporter.com. You must visit more often. Voicemail is 616-666-6778 or use the widget on the right-hand side of the website. Our YouTube channel is MMO Reporter Network and remember to like our videos and subscribe to the GW Reporter playlist and if you feel like it, wander around and see what other shows are on the network that you might enjoy. You are a welcome guest. Mm -hmm. Facebook is GW Reporter. Tumblr is gwreporter.tumblr.com in a world where you can visit us on Twitter, I am Ultra at Ultratown. Find me at Hunter's Insight. Alona may be found at at One Big Pair. As in P E A R. And Celeste at Selly Uki. C E L E O O K I E. Or you can visit us in game. I'm One Big Pair. One Two Four Nine. And Ultra is Ultratown. Five Six Eight Three. And I'm Saliuki.5046. May the spirits of the wild watch over you. Good hunting. Keep your blade sharp and your powder dry. Take care of yourself. May the six watch over you. Until next time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll tell <tunnel feet. laughs> Yeah, mm, oh, this yes. is so okay. Chat Hunter has a, a char with really awesome armor, and one of the colors is orange on it, and it looks awesome. But uh oh. My screen just went away for a second. Okay. But um, I think it was Spirit told him he looked Spirit, like a pumpkin yeah. once. And now he's all self-conscious. He's not a pumpkin. It's not pumpkin colored, but it is orange. It looks awesome. It's kind of pumpkin colored. Pumpkin yeah, but it doesn't make, but it doesn't look like a pumpkin. No, no, it doesn't look like a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you people, you're going to make it difficult for Celeste to edit this episode. I'm so glad you brought this up. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag awesome. <laughs> yes. like, I said it just as she typed it. <laughs> anyway. Back on topic. Okay. Yes. We're getting stream fuzziness. Uh, you, you start getting a little bit um, uh, robotic. Jargony. Uh, jargony. Oh. But that's okay. It'll be fine on the, on the recording. Yeah. So it's fine. <laughs> Bells and missiles. No, you have to read it like I typed it. <laughs> Periodic inscur inscursions? Inscursions. Periodic <laughs> inscursions. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.